Could you introduce yourself? Liam. Liam. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Liam. Hi, Liam. I'm giving a talk. I'll just start now. Is that all right? Yeah. 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 All right. I'm giving a talk about slavery and Christianity because, well, I found when I was making this talk, I actually found out horribly enough that there are a number of Christian apologists who seem to try to support white wash slavery. And yeah. Basically, uh, uh, basically, uh, the ma one of them, the major idea, one of them, first of the major ideas, is that all this that doesn't actually support slavery. They uh, use a combination of the Hebrew uh, limitation of slavery, where slavery would only last for seven years. If you buy Hebrew slavery, you'll serve you for six years. But the seventh year shall go as a free man of pay uh, payment. They use that as a form of that slavery was indentured labour, effectively, and then they uh, combine this with another verse to say that since that since the Hebrews were told to treat foreign slaves the same, <laughs> foreigners the same way that they would treat themselves, they'd have to treat them more, more foreigners like Hebrew slaves. The problem is, this is contradicted by the verse at the bottom, your male and female slaves come from the nations around you, from then you can buy slaves. You can rule them to your children's inherited property and make them slaves for life. What this effectively means is that there were two types of slavery. One was the effectively indentured labour system where where the bonded people would work for seven years. Of, as a, there's a rod verse there now, which is they can basically you you're not supposed to injure them too badly with, if you have a rod, but you by beating them with the rod. But I thought, but since the ancient world was a very cruel place, but really they are right. That is indentured. That is more of a form of indentured labour. But and but effectively they did practice slavery on foreigners. And uh, finally, a uh, few kidnaps a man, whether he sells them or is found in his possession, shall be put to death. This is widely used to, a put, to claim that, that Christianity is against the transatlantic slave trade. The, that, the problem is that it is also contradictory. That also contradicts the Leviticus verse at the bottom. You can buy things from foreigners who do that. Anyway, uh, so this moves on to the New Testament. The New Testament is a lot more explicit on slavery, and it condones it a lot more. It tells slaves, um, slaves repeatedly, to obey their masters. Slaves have to be under regard their masters with all honour. Those who shall have believers as their masters must serve them all the more. And uh, you should teach and practice, teach and practice, and, uh, and, and preach these principles. They basically, uh, they don't want to look bad. At, early Christians didn't want to look bad in the eyes of the Romans. And while they thought that slaves, slave owners should be nice to their slaves and not be too cruel to them, they also thought that slaves would have to obey their slave, their owners back and show them obedience to prove that they were Christians, and it was you know, quite messed up, but it was just simply a result of the historic time. And uh, now uh, I'm going to just move, try to move on to the actual historic time. Greco-Roman slavery, because Greek, the Greeks and the Romans had very similar slave systems that were effectively the same. The main sources of slaves would be the sla enemies captured in battle, or more rarely, people who sold them, who owed their debt and were enslaved as a result. The Athenians actually, and both societies banned citizens selling themselves into, into slavery as a way of debt payment, because it weakened their societies. And basically, slavery was agricultural, and uh, they worked slaves there in the mines. They both had one third of the population being slaves, so that the other, so the one third free male population could keep the slave population in check easily. And uh, they used slaves mainly for agriculture. They were very, very, very good at making them work. They effectively did have plantations where they grow well, wine and olive oil. And they, the idea that Roman slavery was not like the New World slavery is basically completely wrong. In in many ways, it was actually a lot cruel. It, it was very, very cruel. And they hadn't they hadn't developed the game method, which, but it was still incredibly horrible and. This, this is effectively, condo effectively condoning the New World slave system under Christianity. Anyway, uh, slavery basically uh, but would turn into feudalism as the Roman Empire collapsed and they weren't able to easily buy lots of foreign slaves and use them for anything. And uh, serfdom is, which was very strongly supported by the church, as a lot of Christian history will tell you, basically. Uh, it basically, serfdom was effectively slavery, so serfs couldn't leave the place they were born, they were made to work, <coughs> the, the person who owned the manor which they belonged to could punish them however they liked, and had completely control of the legal system. 
and this is another, this is Christianity or Christian institutions supporting effective slavery without any actual opposition from the Bible. And then finally, there's American slavery, uh, which is a lot more detailed. It, basic American slavery effectively started off the moment Columbus arrived in the Americas and enslaved the people on the islands because <coughs> he had iron weapons and they didn't. And uh, they took over Mexico and large areas of land. They worked to Peru, the people in the, in the Inca Empire and in Mexico to death in the mines. Uh, the picture down at the bottom is basically is about what, that, what the, how the way they were treated. They were actually, there was, there was, there was uh, back, for yeah, previous, it was an institution called peonage, which was basically hereditary debt and it was set up so the person who owed you money would never be able to pay you back because you charged them more than they'd be able to work. They created big estates called Halciendas, which uh, which basically acted as mines, which could be used as mines, factories to mass produce cheap items, pre-industrial factories and plantations. Eventually, since eventually they had, to, and eventually the transatlantic slave trade kicked in and you had the Caribbean, where which was the worst, effectively the worst slave, 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 slave society ever because all the slaves were, were going to die because of disease in 10, -ish, 10 or so years. And everyone knew that, so <coughs> they had to actually rebel and they'd be treated incredibly poorly. And uh, slavery did start off with the idea that Christians should enslave people to bring them to the true faith, but then it shifted into race, into a race-based slavery, and it adopted something called the Curse of Canaan, which Basically, it's support. It's basically this is the three race, three main racial groups, and then the curse of Canaan got mixed up with the ancestor Ham, and some and an Arabic idea that said that black people were the descendants of Ham, and they basically decided that black people were a slave race, and that was what Christianity said. And anyone who opposed this was opposing Christianity, and it went very poorly. <laughs> and while there were Christians who opposed it, there were a lot more that supported it. So I just put this in to show that slavery is still around in the modern world. But now Christians, Christianity has been forced to adapt to more than secular values and now opposes it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> one quick question? Yeah. Very well covered. Very well covered. Yeah, one small uh, yeah. point. I would only make the point. Only a point. Um, some of this slavery, you talked about serfs being slaves. Yeah. Well, actually, that's the, that starts to break down a little bit during the Black Death because of the, they start to move away from the, the and when they move to different places because of labour shortage, the kind of rifle laws. That is the end. time of serfdom that effectively starts dying, most kind of, and then it restarts in Eastern Europe a, little bit, a lot later. But yeah, that did effectively kill serfdom because once people can start moving around, serfdom dies because you can't get new serfs. Yeah. Did you okay. see any um, typical examples for um, being able to buy your freedom? So I mean, I, I'm just looking at foreign examples. slaves couldn't buy their freedom, but they probably well, they didn't have a legal way of doing it. But they're probably allowed to do it informally. For native slaves, they had the whole jubilee year, or it's the seven year period. Okay. And yeah. Any, anyone else? Okay. Thank you very much, Liam.